Have you ever been quizzed about the economy during a holiday dinner? Of course you have. We've got Michelle Meyer, the head of U.S. economics at Bank of America Global Research, joining us now with some tips on how to navigate conversations about the economy this holiday season. Uh, always good to see you, uh, Michelle, and I really enjoyed this note. I've been getting questions like this for the past 15 years of my career. I wish this list was around 15 yep. years ago. Uh, but one of these questions that stood out to me was uh, election. You know, a lot of people I'm sure will get questions on, on how the election season might impact their investments. What's your answer? So I think the way that at least I've been thinking about it is for the time being, it's a question of uncertainty, right? So the democratic field is still open. It's still pretty fluid. Um, so until we have a little bit more clarity as to who the democratic front runner might be, which we won't really have until March, until we get to Super Tuesday, um, it's really hard to be able to think about specific policies and how they may impact the economy or markets. So in the interim, it's really just a story of uncertainty. Follow the headlines, follow the ideas, but realize that there's still a pretty long path before we're going to see significant changes in the White House and in Washington that could actually impact the policies. That's a 2021 story. For 2020, it's all about just monitoring um, the election and um, thinking as best as you can about what those next might be uh, looking ahead to 2021. Michelle, we know that these political conversations can get pretty heated over the holidays. What, can, Especially yeah. when people find out what yeah. you do for a living, it's like, wait a minute, what about my job? What about my stocks? What about the economy? How do you totally. diffuse these conversations? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, it's always good to change the question to the extent that you can, and that's what we tried to do with this note, which is to give you some simple talking points, some facts. Um, so if asked specifically about somebody's job in a specific region, talk generally about the labor market. The unemployment rate's at 3.5%, the labor market's tight, job opening rates are high, quit rates are high. That's a good thing. That means that people have the ability to quit their job and find another job someplace else. Um, wages are rising, particularly amongst lower income individuals. So you're seeing that tightness in the labor market start to drive up um, income growth amongst that cohort. So offer as many facts as you can. And um, that's why I think it's, it's very helpful to be armed with this information, <laughs> to know <laughs> what the economy is doing and to be able to offer some insight that might be helpful to your relatives. Michelle, what type of questions do you get around the holiday table? <laughs> Well, I have to say it does differ every year. Oftentimes the questions will be somewhere around housing is always a hot topic, in part because that impacts um, so many people, whether you're actively invested in markets or you're thinking carefully about the economy or you're just simply a homeowner. Um, you care about the trends in the housing market and something that uh, people do follow quite closely. So oftentimes they'll be asked about the strength of the housing market, whether it's a good time to buy or a good time to sell. And of course, the answer always starts with, well, it's local, it's regional, but here are the drivers. The drivers are that interest rates are low, so affordability is attractive. The drivers are that inventory is pretty lean right now on balance, but certain markets are starting to see a little bit of an excess, so maybe there's a little bit more opportunity there for price discounting. Um, but that always is a hot topic, is what's the health of the housing market and how do I gauge the trends going forward to understand how to plan? People want to plan. They want to have some insight in terms of what their personal finances might look like. You know, in your calming, upbeat voice, you make me feel so much better about all these things we're talking about. So good for your relatives. <laughs> um, but goal. what about, you know, there's that always that uncle who just won't give up. What do you do with that relative? Yeah, so when it gets to that point, you just pivot. Change the topic. Some stock offer picks. some food. Offer a cocktail. Talk about the Super Bowl. That's always good. <laughs> move away from economics. Move yeah. away. Slowly move away from politics. <laughs> Michelle, one more. I was reading to the bottom of this note, and yeah. you call out a potential decoupling in the tech sector is inevitable. What do you mean by that? Mm, so that's really in terms of the trade war. Um, and that is another topic that... People want to understand, they want to know what's actually happening between the U.S. and China. Is it just about shrinking the trade deficit and getting manufacturing back in the U.S.? Or is it bigger? Is it around um, a war of technology? Is it around how to think about these two huge superpowers in the long run? Um, and this is a conversation that can go on for some time, and it's complicated, and it can get heated, too. But I think the general idea is that it is more than simply terms of trade. It is about technology. Um, it's about human rights issues. And as a result, we're supposed to assume that uh, this conversation continues, that it's not going away, these negotiations with China. It could take a different form depending on who's in the White House, but it's not going away.
Okay, wishing you f politics and economic free conversation during the holidays. Michelle yeah. Meyer, thanks so much. <laughs> you as well. Happy New Year. Happy holidays.